making this video as a response to many email questions that I'm getting about another video I made approximately eight months ago. And in that video, I explained how the number of the wild beast is calculated and why it's 666. I also explained why it's a man's number. One of the things that I did not explain in that video was how Jehovah's Witnesses receive the mark of the wild beast and why that mark is either on their hand or their forehead. And so this video should answer that question. If you started watching this video and you have not seen the video I made eight months ago about how to calculate the number of the wild beast, then I recommend that you do that first. It provides the support for what I'm about to say in this video. You can find the video on my YouTube channel, you can find it on Google Video, you can find it in my blog, or better yet, you could read about it in my book. Where possible, I'll put links in the venue that you're watching this video in. The video which I made about how to calculate the number of the wild beast contained quite a lot of very convincing evidence and included uh, tangible written proofs. However, uh, the skeptics came back to me and said, well, if all of this is true, then there must be some way that Jehovah's Witnesses are receiving the mark of the wild beast. And they're right. It's a valid question. And so, if you consider, by the time you reach the end of this video, the total amount of evidence that will have piled up then uh, I hope you realize that uh, skepticism should now be driven beyond any kind of acceptable limit. If I can prove by the end of this video that Jehovah's Witnesses are indeed receiving the mark of the wild beast in their forehead or in their hand, then please, it must be true. So here we go. So if you've now watched that video, you should understand what the name of the wild beast is. God's Spirit Directed Organization. It's an extra name added to that list of other names that Jesus Christ commanded uh, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of Holy Spirit. So it is another name. So how does a Jehovah's Witness get marked by this name? Well, it's simple. If you watch the last video, I explained to you what the baptismal vows were and that the baptismal candidates actually had to make a vow which agreed that they were a part of God's spirit directed organization and so now they're marked by the name. I also showed you how to calculate the number and why it was 666 so they're also marked by the number of the name. If you didn't watch the video, then this won't be making sense. Please watch that last video. The baptismal candidate makes a vow which says they agree they are now a Jehovah's Witness in association with God's Spirit-directed organization. So that's how they get the mark of the name. But they're also agreeing that they are now included in that organization. And so in the previous video, I showed you how the number of its name was calculated. So if the baptismal candidate agrees they are now a part of that organization, then they're now included. They have the number of the name. There is another issue surrounding the Jehovah's Witness baptism that uh, I'd like to bring to your attention, uh, which I didn't mention in, in the last video. And uh, that is that uh, Jesus Christ's commanded uh, baptism uh, includes a list of names and God's Spirit directed organization is another name uh, in addition to all those other uh, commanded names and uh, in the Watchtower article which explains what Jehovah's Witnesses baptismal vows are uh, immediately after that the article explains that these vows are essential for a person's salvation. And so the baptismal candidate, before they can be baptized, has to agree 
that uh, the whole baptismal arrangement is in fact essential for their personal salvation. And hopefully if uh, you're a well-read uh, uh, Bible student, you already know that there's a scripture in the New Testament which says there is no other name by which we might be saved. And so this whole baptismal arrangement flies in the face of that scripture. There really is no other name. And yet here we have in the Jehovah's Witness baptism uh, an extra name and with the uh, admonishment that this name is required for a person's salvation. Now there is a lot of people in the world who believe the mark of the wild beast, the mark which goes on either the forehead or the hand, will be a literal mark that the person could see and touch and f perhaps feel. However, I'd like to read a script to you which explains that the people are deceived into getting this mark on either their forehead or hand. And so therefore, it can't be a literal, tangible mark that they receive in their forehead or hand. And the scripture is in the book of Revelation, chapter 19 and verse 20. I'll read it for you. I'll read it out of the New World Translation of the uh, Holy Bible. Verse 20. And the wild beast was caught, and along with it the false prophet, that performed in front of it the signs with which he misled those who received the mark of the wild beast and those who render worship to its image. So, do you see in the scripture that the people are misled into receiving this mark? And so therefore, it can't be a literal, visible, tangible mark, because after all, if people started receiving a mark on their forehead or right hand, which you could see, then everyone else in the world would immediately stop receiving that mark because they'd know that it was the mark of the wild beast. And so no one could be deceived. And so this mark is not a literal, tangible mark. It has to be symbolically received on either the forehead or right hand. And so it is kind of interesting that there is some randomness to whether the mark is on the forehead or the hand. Because what would it be that would decide this, whether you had it on the hand or forehead? Well, it all has to do, once again, with the Jehovah's Witness baptism. Whether the mark is received on the hand or the forehead has a lot to do with a doctrine which is unique to uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses. And that doctrine is the one which says that baptism has to include a full immersion in order to be valid. And so, yes, Jehovah's Witnesses say that in order for you to be baptized, your entire body has to go underneath the water. So, imagine, please, if uh, you will, if you were at a baptismal ceremony, uh, a Jehovah's Witness ceremony, and one of the candidates did not go completely underneath the water. And so all those other Jehovah's Witnesses who are watching the ceremony might now consider that candidate as not baptized. And so one of the most important functions of the attendant who's in the water with the baptismal candidate is to make absolutely certain that the candidate's body is fully immersed, that every part of that person's body is underneath the water. Only until the very last part of a person's body goes underneath the water is the baptism valid. Please now go to Jehovah's Witnesses, The Mark of the Beast, Part 2, and I will give you a demonstration of how each and every one of Jehovah's Witnesses receives the mark of the beast on either their forehead or hand.